Hi, I found this uh, interesting um, circuit simulator applet. It, um, you can uh, just uh, Google search for this and whoever wrote this did a really good job and the default circuit that comes up is is the exact uh, one that we want to use to model this Bashar STA. Um, you've got an inductor, um, you've got a resistance, and you've got a capacitor. So the Bashar STA is all of those things. Uh, there's resistance in the wire, there's the inductance, and there's an implicit capacitance. Um, the way you uh, alter any of these values is um, you right click on them, select edit, and you type in the uh, the value and then click OK. Um, so I'm, uh, I've edited these to be uh, 1.5 uh, millihenries, 1.1 1 .1 ohms, and um, I don't really know what the capacitance of the coil is, but but let's say it's uh, you know 80 for now. Um, then uh, this battery that you put across here uh, can be uh, say 100 volts DC, and this is a way of uh, simulating like a lightning strike where um, some high speed uh, pulse enters enters the system, and then and then we can watch the waveforms down here on the scope. So. Uh, here's the scope, and uh, oh, you have to click. Uh, right now, it's stopped. I have to unstop it. Get the scope going. Um, so I'm going to simulate lightning strikes by um, just uh, pulsing periodically, where I'll pulse once and let it ring down. Okay, there's one pulse, and you can see it ringing down. Pulse ringing down. Um, now, as an experiment, we can uh, we can dial in um, a lot smaller resistance. So let's say we can make the resistance 0.1 ohms. That would be pretty tough to achieve, but and now uh, create a pulse, boom you can see that it rings down much, much slower. So that demonstrates the value of low resistance in your coil. Okay, um, but I couldn't achieve that with mine. I gotta put this back to 1.1. And uh, now Let's say you could also get rid of capacitance somehow. Let's make this um, 10 picofarads. And we will simulate a lightning strike. Kaboom! Same thing. Small capacitance. Highly desirable. Rings for a really long time. Um, so the magic in an LRC circuit is to uh, have the inductance as large as possible, resistance as small as possible, and capacitance as small as possible. Nikola Tesla has a famous patent uh, showing this uh, flat spiral coil, um, and I um, drew one of the wires black and, the, and left the other one white to kind of show um, how this thing is uh, a bifiler coil. And um, if you think about the Bashar STA being that sort of coil, but rather f rather than flattened out, it's uh, uh, shaped into a, a, a cone, um, then that has an even more dramatic effect of, re of reducing the capacitance. Uh, the, the reason why Tesla went with this is the capacitance is really, really small because each neighboring wire is a different uh, it's not a. It's not the direct. Um, each loop is not directly next to the neighboring loop. There's a. There's one wire distance between them. So the capacitance between a white loop and another white loop is is bigger. A uh, uh, the bigger distance meaning smaller capacitance. Um, but you form this thing into a cone, and you are. Uh, separating the wires from each other even more dramatically uh, down the geometry. Oh, this was um, patent. Tesla's patent is number 512340, by the way.
Um, there was there was a circuit in this uh, book, um, Electronic Gadgets for the Evil Genius. It's a um, solid state Tesla coil, and it uses a uh, uses a um, a flyback uh, transformer from a TV set or something here. And um, I had made this uh, about a year ago on a proto board, and um, I haven't made the assembly or the circuit board yet, but it, uh, it's 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 a good way to uh, create a source of high voltage at a higher frequency with uh, minimal cost, and the circuit's pretty uh, simple. Um, so I'm going to try to use that as a way of um, creating high voltage to uh, play around with the Bashar STA. Um, so the plan is to have this uh, solid state Tesla coil, 13.8 volt DC supply, coming into a flyback transformer. The one, the flyback that I have is not so great and it might have a diode in it, I'm not sure. Um, these are hard to find nowadays. Um, so this will come to the coil um, and then uh, I, I tried different things um, but an interesting experiment is to have a spark gap here because as the potentials build up um, to the point where the uh, dielectric uh, breakdown can happen in the air um, then uh, then the CFL will, you know the discharge will happen and the CFL, CFL will light um, without a lot of load on this thing and um, uh, on my roof I put a can that has these pins mounted on it uh, um, stealing from the idea of a ionic generator, but also Tesla has a patent where he mentions that you want a antenna that has a lot of pointy surfaces so that the ions can flow up and down between ground and uh, and this this termination point. Um, if you if you were to use a, a spherical shape, a round surface. That's more of like like a capacitor, and charges build up really high before letting loose. Whereas the this approach provides a gradual uh, movement of ions. Um, anyway, so I thought I'd experiment with that sort of shape, and I mounted it up high on top of my roof of, of my house. And what I want to show is uh, I can optionally clip this on here or not, and there's actually a different um, effect that I will show you. Okay, this is the uh, power supply. It's 13.8 uh, volts DC coming into the solid state Tesla coil on a protoboard, which is protoboard which is not ideal because uh, there's a lot of noise and things. This is the crummy old flyback I have and they have you wind your own coil on it. And that goes up this clip lead to the top of the Bashar STA. I'm going to unclip the antenna to start with. Then the other side comes into the spark gap where you can adjust the distance here. And, and then a CFL with all the electronics removed and then off to ground. Uh, so switching this on, um, we have a very nice spark going across here and a very bright light although the character of this light is kind of a yellowish color uh, okay now I'm going to take the antenna which is that four inch cylinder can connect it on to the top here and look what happens to the spark And then the light, the light becomes dramatically more white and uh, the power load I think is reduced and these parts aren't as hot as they were. They're still warm. Now this is a pretty high voltage, you don't want to be touching this, and you also don't want to be standing here barefoot.
Now I've, I've also noticed that the frequency adjustment doesn't really matter too much when in this mode. I can't really control it. It seems to be uh, doing its own thing here. I can control it a little bit, but I think the, uh, the antenna is picking up uh, various events and ca causing this discharge to happen more randomly and with different uh, potential. I will remove the antenna again. Back to a more calm spark, yellowish light. In parts that are... Ow! Heating up. <laughs> now the frequency uh, can be controlled a little bit better, I think. Um, Okay, I'm going to connect the antenna back up again. Spark changes. Now, now when you connect up an antenna like this, the loading, the loading is different because this is like adding a capacitance, but it's an, also another source of uh, incoming energy. Um, this control controls sort of how much power I'm giving the circuit, and I can reduce this down and. Uh, by reducing it down lower, the light actually got brighter, and the spark got less. Now, if I crank the power up, there's sort of a threshold where it doesn't work anymore, and then suddenly it bursts through with a lot more aggressive spark. So there, there's different pla basically there's different places here. The, the power adjustment will adjust the fre frequency too. Now I want to show you what happens on my scope here. Uh, this is my scope has a probe connected to this metal plate, so it's pa passively detecting the the uh, the field that's coming off of here, and um, it looks like this with the spark gap. Not anything you can trigger on. Uh, my setting is 100 volts per division. This is a lot of uh, pa a lot of voltage, high voltage. Back to removing the antenna. There's still uh, randomness, but not as dramatic. I move this down a little bit. You have a more uh, predictable waveform. Uh, so one one thing that's uh, becoming clear to me, um, I can explain this way. Um, you know, power uh, from energy conversion is is what's really always going on. You 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 know you can't violate the law of conservation of energy. All you can do is burn stuff, convert it to heat, convert that to steam, and then convert that to a, a sp spinning mechanical machines that that generate electricity uh, using electromagnetism. You can use radiation. You know, some fissional fission. Uh, create heat, make steam, have a mechanical machine turn into electricity. You can have wind, mechanical machine, turn into electricity. You can have solar, which is a, a, a very interesting uh, electrochemical process happening, turn into electricity. Or, with this Basher STA approach, you can receive uh, spikes, voltage spikes, lightning strikes around the planet, uh, solar events, various discharges that are short-lived in time, but highly energetic pulses. And then using a large inductance with minimal resistance and minimal capacitance, you can smooth out that energy into a sinusoidal waveform that's damped, and hopefully it's not damped too quickly. So you're taking something that happened in a very quick amount of time and slowing it down time-wise, hence the notion of space-time being used to do that, 
to convert it into electricity, something closer to an AC waveform, then that waveform can be converted to DC if you want to do that, or um, leave it as AC but but uh, adjust it so that it's um, smoothed, smoothed out. Uh, you can charge capacitors, you can charge batteries, and so forth. So I think uh, this is a valid approach of taking uh, pulses, uh, energy discharges that are happening at various frequencies, but highly energetic, have, having some means of receiving those and then bringing them to a large inductance to uh, create this sort of waveform.